How is Jeremiah as a player? Complete. Um, both offense and defense, he can do everything out there. Defensively, he can pretty much defend everyone out there on the court. Uh, and he's just an overall uh, great player. Uh, but the best thing about him is uh, he makes everybody on the team much better. Uh, he will get everybody involved. He's very vocal. Uh, he's a great leader out there. And he just leads us all by sample. He will do whatever it takes um, to win that game for you. And at the same time, uh, you know, become really uh, a leader when it's needed. Jeremiah grew up in Fontana, California, 1985. Not much was to the city in those days, but a small town filled with grapevine fields and a good community. Born the last of eight children, he was known as the seat filler and was once told while still in the womb that his hands were blessed. I'm Jeremiah's mother. I'm his mama. <laughs> and I just like to tell you about Jeremiah playing basketball. Jeremiah been playing ball since he was a little bitty kid. He used to sleep with a basketball. Everywhere you saw him, you saw him with a basketball. Bless his little heart. So we figured he was going to be a basketball player. But you know, somebody told me, lady told me one time that his blessing was in his hands. That's when I was pregnant with him. She told me I was having a boy, and his blessing was in his hands. And so God gave him that blessing of playing basketball. He carried him quite a bit. I think it helped to soothe his nerves and stuff, too, because he'd be out here playing all times of day and night. And one time he came home from college, and he was out here playing in the middle of the night. I thought maybe he was drunk or something, kind of, you know, uh, fended off like that, you know. So anyway, but, but he has been blessed, and I thank God for that. And... Um, he was a super basketball player, you know, good attitude and everything. And even when he felt like coaches and things was wrong, he still held a good attitude, and I appreciate that. God has been good to him, taking him many places with that basketball. Met many friends, many people that that uh, loved and admired him as a player, and he was always a humble player. All I ever wanted to do was play basketball, and I was in my front yard almost every day doing it. And um, as a kid, I remember we was going against um, this team called St. Joe's. And they used to always beat us. And then one game, uh, we had came back from like a lot down. And it was like my first game winner. And I remember, you know, getting the ball and going down the court. Everybody was screaming and stuff. I even almost lost the ball came down and then threw it up boom it went off the backboard and went in uh you know the coaches went crazy uh my mom rushed down to the court and she just hugged me and i was just crying because i had that much passion of, of beating that team like i wanted to beat them so bad because they were like you know the top team in the city and um that's one of my memories of like my first game winning shot Our family did a lot of stuff together. We um, we had a great childhood. I had a great childhood. Our parents were very supportive. They took us, man, you name it, we went. Um, I was a, you know, happy kid and always had a smile on my face. And uh, all I wanted to do was play basketball and have fun, you know, be around my brothers and sisters. Um, you know, I was always around my brother John John. John John was a clown, you know what I mean? He he uh always had the jokes going on and we was close around the same age. So that was cool. Um I remember my mom bought us our first suits. Hey boys, let me see you walk over there. Like that, this man. Nice young man. Okay, walk over there my little suits. These boys are sharp today. I wanna let y'all know. These boys are shot. We got some girls visiting. and I tell you the truth, it's just perfect when you got much girls in the house. It's just like living in a zoo. Okay, now y'all boys take up coats off and walk over there and let me see what y'all look like. Here's a young man sitting here on filling his navel and you know scratching his eyeballs out. Okay, this is John Houston Ward. John Houston, how old are you, son? Eight. He's eight years old. He's nice looking young man too for eight years old. Look at y'all pants in the back. Kinda tall. Put on her. 
Our parents used to, uh, like I said, take us everywhere. And we always went to um, this place called uh, Mountain Lakes. We would go up there, go swimming, take our friends. Our family was always up there camping. Um, and it was just a joy to see our family, you know, do all these things and just have fun with each other. And our parents were really good at just watching us and spending time with us and seeing them two together. It was just an amazing thing. Um, and this place that we always went to, we still go to this day. And it's like a family, you know, tradition. People come home, we go out there. We camp. My brothers and sisters come back from Texas. They always go up there, find some time. Back in the day, we had everybody come up there with us. We'd be around the the picnic table, um, and then at the at the campground, and then at the campground we have like the tents and everything, and um, we would all basically be at one picnic table because we couldn't have two because it was one per site, and it'll just be like super super fun. Um, all of us is waiting around and for breakfast. My dad would be. Uh, we was always deep whenever we went anywhere we um we would at least be six kids deep with two parents you know what i mean uh we would go out to my grandpa's um house in the desert and we would stay in his um trailer in the back and all of us would be back there like <laughs> like chilling and um even when we went to you know dance recitals and everything like that. My sisters were in the choir. We would all be there, you know, to support all of us. You know what I'm saying? Six kids, seven kids, eight kids, depending on who was with us that day. We would always have um, a random person or people or friends or uh, with us. And looking back at the videos, we would be around a table and it would be you know, somebody's friend or teammate or something like that around the table with us. And we always had kids at the house. And my parents didn't mind that. Let's go. Who's in the bedroom? Kevin. Fully dressed, right? Ready to meet the world? Huh? Say something. Launch your time for the night? Yeah. Uh. When we first got our camera, uh, we got in front of it and, you know, we did skits, we sang, uh, we just did fun things together and our parents were super cool. They let us have fun and let us be kids. We didn't sit in front of a TV all day or any, any day. Um, we didn't even have a TV growing up because our parents didn't allow us to watch TV because they wanted us to go outside and play and expand our mind and, you know, be coordinated and be creative in our minds and, you know, uh, be a kid because you stand in front of a TV all day and video games and, you know, your childhood is going to be strictly video games. So they were good about that. We didn't understand it till we got older. Um, but looking back, I'm so glad that they let us you know, just be kids and uh, be innocent. And it, it was it was wonderful. I always say we were like the Cosby's because we, did, we just did everything. We was always in our front yard, you know, on our skates or our bikes or playing basketball for the most part. It was just a joy for us to be out there. Birthdays was the coolest. My mom would 
uh, make the cake and my dad would go get some ice cream. And I remember my um, my fourth birthday when I got my first haircut. It was like a whole day full of fun. How old are you? Huh? I can't hear you. Okay. What is his birthday? Can't hear you. Say it loud. Okay, 1989. We was all at the barber shop when I went to go get my first haircut on my birthday. Uh, we was in there deep too, and uh, it was it was pretty fun because my brother I think he got one too, and then it was my turn to get in chair and my first haircut ever. So as I was getting my hair cut, um, my mom wanted to keep my first haircut hair. So she put it in a, a little braid and then had the barber cut it off. And then she took it and I don't even know what that thing is, but it was, it was a fun day. That day was awesome. Um, all, all my family around the table, like we always do, and uh, like we always did. And my daddy had the camera. I, I you know, what I'm saying I blew out the candles. We had cake and ice cream, and we just had a fun time. And it's awesome to, you know, see my dad, um, at a young age in the videos. It's pretty dope. He was a super cool dude. Um, and my mom and my dad were like super into each other. And um, he worked very hard to make sure we had everything. Uh, even when he wasn't at work, he was always working, doing something else. And um, he was a great provider. Um, great father, great husband. My mom loved him to death. Okay, this is Anna Ward, and as you all know, I'm the mother of this family. Sometimes I don't know if that's good or bad, but I am. And we're all getting ready to eat ice cream here tonight. I'm always the one that gets left out when they serve anything, but I see tonight they didn't leave me out. They didn't leave yeah, me out. Yeah, one extra cup left. Okay, oh, oh, ice cream. Did you know that? They gave me double tonight. That's why I'm fat. I keep telling them, don't fix things that make me fat. And they keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I figure since they gave it to me, I should eat it. So that's why I get fatter and fatter. Are you even one? Okay. Tighten up. Look at it. Isn't it lovely? Good looking thing. I'm going to tell you. When the Lord gave me this man, the Lord gave me a good looking man. And a good hearted man, too. And I don't care what nobody say. He's mine. When it comes to ball as a basketball player, um, Jeremiah was athletic uh, at a young age. And the skills, I'm pretty sure he was dunking in seventh, seventh grade. Um, eighth grade, sixth grade, one of those. A little bit closer during middle school when we went to Alder Middle School. Um, still played ball. Jay Ward was nice. We would hang out at his spot. 
Uh, and uh, man, I got so many stories of uh, us just hanging out, playing ball, people getting dunked on in, in front of his house, people getting dunked on, like dunked on in front of his house. <laughs> I've known that man uh, ever since uh, the fourth grade. We went to Mango Elementary School. Uh, Jay Ward, he's always been in the ball. Um, and uh, since, you know, that that's when I've seen him play. And ever since then, that's just what it's been about. He came from a strong family of faith, with his father being a pastor, and both parents were very big into the church, teaching the family of values, morals, and keeping the family name and good graces. Jeremiah was taught to always put God first, keep his head on his shoulders, and stay humble. His parents instilled in him the importance of God, teamwork, and unselfishness. Coming from a church family, there were times he had to miss games because there were the same time as a game that fell on a Sunday. This is basically how it went on a Sunday where uh, me and my brother, uh, John John had a game or I had a game. So it depends what time the game was. So if the game was, let's just say 9 a.m. at tournament, we would take on the game, we go to church. If the game was from 10 to 10 through 12, Anything, anytime between there, we will try to see if we can go to the super early service at eight so we can make it to the game. There were times that I would come in like after first quarter or right when the game starts and the, the coaches understood. Um, they were really cool about that. And um, if the games were like at 12, then that, that'd be awesome, 12 and after. We would definitely make those ones, but if it fell right in the middle of church, we was not going at all. My parents always said, once again, you know, God comes first. And to this day, I, I truly believe that. Um, he gives us a talent, like my mom said, he gives a talent. He can take it away any moment. So you put him on a back burner, then it's kind of like, you know, kind of, kind of like an insult. So that's how it was on, you know, Sundays and basketball, church. My parents was not playing when it came to that. Growing up in a Christian home, church had to come first. And my father being a pastor, we were always, you know, at the church doing things. Um, Saturdays, Sundays, Wednesdays. So if I had practice on Wednesday, it would be uh, practice and then go to the night service. Sunday was we go to church service in the morning. Then after church, we do some, you know, cleaning up or cut the lawn and then eat and then have church service later on that night. Uh, Saturdays would just you know, if anything needs to be done for the lawn, if we didn't do it, you know, Sunday before, then we would do that. Um, church was a big part of our family. And I really appreciate, you know, being born into, you know, a family like that because it taught, you know, me and my brothers and sisters, morals and hard work and right from wrong. So when we got older, we can know those things and we can, um, you know, do the right thing morally. Um, we're, we're not perfect, but it was just the fact that, you know, we were taught that. And that's the, the, the great thing I appreciate my parents doing with us. Um, I've known Jeremiah since we were little kids. Um, I believe probably nine, 10 years old, playing on the same basketball team growing up, uh, the bad boys, and uh, then playing against him in high school. 
played on the same AAU team with him. And one memory that I have uh, that just goes to show how important Jeremiah is to a team and being a great teammate as well as being a great player is we were playing in a big time tournament in Vegas, which was the biggest tournament of the summer. Uh, we were making an amazing run and uh, we made it to the semifinals going up against the Texas Blue Chips. Like uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, AC Law, they had a bunch of D1 guys and Jeremiah was our starting point guard. Uh, we played them on a Sunday and Jeremiah being involved in the church with his family as much as he was, uh, he had to go to church that day and he couldn't play in that game. We lost, and I think in double overtime, real close game. And uh, I truly believe if he would have played, that we would have won that game. We might have won the whole tournament. Um, but it just goes to show how valuable of a teammate, how valuable of a player he was, um, and how he impacted the team. And uh, I know I followed uh, Jeremiah's career um, and he did that on every team that he played for. A uh, great teammate and an even better person. He came from a line of basketball players with his sister Safrina, brother Seifers, and John John being the older basketball siblings. His sister Safrina was a star, having reporters at the house often for interviews and coaches coming in and out for recruitment. Seifers attended and played on the first high school basketball team at A.B. Miller High School, where Jeremiah would go and attend practices and work out with the team at an elementary age. Other brother, John John, also played at A.B. Miller and had the ability to jump out the gym that would land him to play in college and in Mexico. Safrina was a beast. She went to A.B. Miller also and she played, um, what she played, small forward or guard, one of those. And she was like, she was like, a, let me see, she reminded me of Cheryl Swoops mixed with Charles Barkley, and she was really good. Uh, lefty. She went to play in Belgium for Team California to represent the U.S., and that was pretty dope. And with that, they had, you know, reporters and newspaper people coming in and out uh, at the house. And, you know me, I wanted to be in the paper with her. So I was gardener you know, playing defense and stuff as it was taking pictures. And of course, I got front page with her uh, playing basketball in the front yard. So that was pretty cool. And uh, my sister, she was probably the first female I seen dunk. And she's like 5'10", on 10 feet. She's a lefty. So she was dunking at 5'10". So when I see, you know, females now, they're like, you know, 6'7", 6'8", dunking. Like, it doesn't impress me because I've seen my sister do it. And she was a really great basketball player. And um, she was one of the basketball players I looked up to coming up. And um, yeah, she was she was pretty dope. She was pretty dope. And she opened the doors for some of us too because, you know, everybody went to Abby Miller. So it's like, oh, you're Safrina's little brother or Seifer's little brother or John John's little brother, Dorian's little brother, Talbot's little brother. So everybody went to the same high school. My brother Seifers also went to A.B. Miller. He was um, a football guy and he, and he played basketball, two sport athlete. Uh, they had a, he played on the first football team at A.B. Miller and the first basketball team. So that was pretty dope for him to do and that. Then there's John John. Uh, me and him go, you know, he was like super tight. We played on the same basketball team up until, um, what, high school? Uh, when he went to high school, I was still in middle school, so I couldn't, we couldn't play on the same team unless we did like a rec thing or something during the summer. But once I got to high school, um, I was on varsity as a freshman, and John John was on um, varsity also. So we played together then, too. And me and him coming up, Man, we was we was always you know hooping together everywhere at parks, um, recreation leagues, different leagues, and when me and him was in the game, um, and we had full control, nobody could really stop us. And we had this move to where I would say, uh, follow me, and he already knew what that meant. So what it was is, I would penetrate to penetrate and then go straight in the middle to the paint like I'm about to do a layup and I just throw it off the backboard and he'll just come yamming 
It's just crazy. Uh, we did that a couple times. That that's our signature move. Uh, I love I love playing with John John. Uh, dude could jump out the gym. Uh, super passionate. His his defense was was crazy. He was one of the rare guys that I seen. He'll probably go up and um, you know for a layup or something, and you know probably miss it or something, and then hustle back on defense and take the charge at the other end if it was a fast break and i'm like wow like he fell from the ground got up and hustled all the way back like i always respect his passion about his defense he could jump out the gym crazy hops uh he was nice he was real nice and i love playing with him All my siblings that play sports were an inspiration to me. And I always looked up to them as um, great competitors. And I just seen what they did to try to mimic them. And of course, I'm a little brother, so I'm looking up to see what they do, what kind of moves they do. And um, just having that, it helped me grow to see what work had to be put in in order to get to their level and then when i got to the level it was um, it felt good because i'm like okay i'm doing the same thing that they did and you know i've always wanted to go to Eddie miller you know since i was a kid because i see my brothers and sisters go i've seen him play on the basketball teams so and i'm up there with them at the practices so i'm like okay you know, when I go up there, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll be the best I can be while I'm up there. And um, it was it, it was fun because when I go up there, you know, the coaches already know me and stuff and um, because of family. And it was just it was just a good adjustment. Oh, no. I lost them, y'all. <laughs> <Lord. laughs> 
Now excuse you. <laughs> hey, that's not good.